Hello, this is Jeff Shiver. Today I want to discuss hidden failures and protective devices from a reliability center maintenance perspective. If we think about hidden failures, we really have to ask a simple question. Will a functional failure on its own become evident to the operating crew under normal circumstances? Let's take this level transmitter we have on the right hand side of the screen. It's maintaining a level between 5,000 and 9,000 gallons. Okay. And it's working through a programmable logic controller and say there's a, a valve that's simply being turned on and off to, to refill up from 5,000 to 9,000. And this particular, for this particular level transmitter, will the functional failure on its own become evident to the operating crew under normal circumstances? And the answer is yes. Now, let's add two additional switches. Let's add a high high or low low. And now the question becomes, would the failure of the high high or the low low on its own become evident to the operating crew under normal circumstances? And the answer is no, because it's the, as long as the ultrasonic level transmitter is working, it's maintaining a level between 5,000 and 9,000 gallons. So we'll never get to the high, high, or the low, low switch, as an example. So the, if the, those two switches, either one of them, failed independently, it would not be evident on its own to the operating crew under normal circumstances. So the failures are hidden. When we talk about protected devices, the real goal of protective devices is to accomplish one of five things. To warn operators of abnormal conditions, think about an alarm strobe, a warning buzzer, or a horn. The second is to shut down equipment in the event of a failure. Pressure switch, vibration switch, overspeed switches are good examples of those. The third is to eliminate or relieve abnormal conditions caused by a failure. So consider for example, a pressure safety valve, relief valve, or a rupture disc on a pressure vessel, or even medical equipment or firefighting equipment as examples. The fourth is to take over from a function that's failed. Think standby, standby plant, standby generator, standby pump. And the fifth is to prevent dangerous situations from arising in the first place. Think guards. Uh, also signage, for example, uh, a warning sign on an elevator. Don't use the elevator in case of fire. Use the stairs instead. So we think about the realities of hidden failure. Think about how many protective devices you actually know about within the factory. And there are lots and lots. The second question is how many do you actually currently maintain correctly? And if you think about it, you really in many cases don't have a maintenance strategy for all of those devices, which you should. What studies have shown is we only only roughly about 60% of all protective devices are actually maintained. And sadly, this is the saddest part of all, is that 20% of those are already in the failed state. And we don't know it because remember the failure is hidden, which is not evident on its own to the operating crew under normal conditions. I hope you enjoyed the tip. <coughs> what this material and much more regarding reliability centered maintenance is covered in our introduction to RCM2 course that we offer both publicly and on site. If you have other questions related to this or other RCM topics, for example, please shoot me an email, jshiver at peopleandprocesses.com. I hope you enjoyed the tip today and have a great day. Thank you.